Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is part three of a landscape rehab job I'm doing here in Raleigh, North Carolina, Zone 7B. Did a uh, part two uh, a couple days ago behind a couple retaining walls back here. If you want to see that video, I'll link it up here in the corner. And then there's one before that out by the uh, road in the front garden space. There's two additional spots I'll be landscaping. And plus, I'm probably adding a sixth video, putting some um, mostly native plants uh, down here in a uh, wooded space behind me. Uh, this is the west side of the house. I didn't address that in the uh, second video. And you would think on the west side of the house here in the south, it would really cook uh, in the afternoon. But the trees here above me uh, prevent that. So the sun gets across the top of the house. The stuff that's in part two of the video will get some direct sun on it for maybe an hour and a half or so. And then these trees behind me will take over and it's quite shady. Uh, the rest of the way back here. It's also sloped, and so this is going to be pretty dry shade uh, uh, back as we we'll go further back into this uh, wooded area. This wooded area has every kind of noxious weed um, that, you know, Raleigh has to offer. Um, a, a lot of older neighborhoods are like this, including mine. There's Vinca Major back here. There's ivy growing back here. There's Ligustrum. There's Nandina Domestica. Uh, there's even bamboo, and, uh, you know, uh, back here on the, somebody back there on two lights back, uh, put in bamboo. So, you know, that's going to try to invade this space as well. So it's, you know, it's one of those kinds of spaces. It's been cleaned out a lot, uh, you know, bleeding up to these landscape jobs. So I just want you to know that it's, it looks wide open uh, right now, but there's a lot of work's gone into that. And it still has a ton of work to go to get all of these noxious weeds cleared out. And it's going to be an ever ongoing fight. You can't, win this battle when you have noxious weeds that are literally backing up to your fence they're always going to try to seed themselves back in so uh, it is what it is in an older spot like this so that's enough talk about the overall project let's get down to the business of part three of the landscape rehab series which in this one i'm trying to create a little room uh, around this patio that was put in this flat space was created by the uh, retaining wall uh, being created behind the camera. So it allowed for a really nice seating space here. So now let's put some, now we're going to put some interesting things around it, uh, but things that don't get too high so that you, when you're sitting in the, you know, sitting down enjoying, you know, around the fire here, uh, you're surrounded by interesting plants, but you can stand up and still see back into the back garden. I'm not trying to block this whole piece off. So it's mostly things that are going to get in the three to four foot range or lower um, with this couple exceptions back there. There's one plant that annoys me though. There's a Japanese, uh, there's a Japanese ligustrum that has decided uh, to take residence here. It's just a noxious weed. But you can see if you put a big giant screening plant in the middle of your backyard, what it kind of does to the overall view. I mean, there's not a direction you can look in in this yard that that thing isn't sitting right in the center of. So it's just not a, I wouldn't have never, I would have never chosen the plant. Of course, it chose this space. So I'm just gonna cut this thing back uh, today. It actually needs to be dug out because it'll keep trying to come back, but um, I'm just gonna use my bypass uh, pruners and uh, kind of quickly make it disappear back here. You can see how, how much of a difference this will actually make in the view of the, in this back garden space. <laughs> it's fighting with wisteria, which is kind of funny. <laughs> They're in some sort of turf battle here. Ta-da! <laughs> it's a huge difference um, taking something like that out of the middle, middle of that space. The view is completely different. We'll put the larger things out at the back uh, later on. Leave this middle part uh, open because uh, she does have a dog uh, that likes to roam back here. So we'll give him plenty of space to move around. And again, instead of having something that large in the middle, we'll, we'll put it out on the edge. I'll go over all the plants uh, after they're uh, in the ground. One thing you'll notice is that some of the things that were planted up here behind the two retaining walls have been carried over uh, down here. And uh, that's by design to, you know, make it look like there's a plan. Uh, there's some new things introduced as you go, but some of the things will carry over um, through each of these, uh, through each of these little segments uh, of this landscaping. Uh, this is, you know, when you're dealing with a dry, shady spot that has tree roots, you know, the, the digging could be a little bit harder uh, in these places. 
overall actually not too bad but when you see something like this and you see all these trees normally i'm thinking i'm going to be you know cutting cutting roots so i did get some help uh digging digging these holes uh already and so i'm going to stick them in the ground and after that we'll go through the plants So at the base of the lower retaining wall, I'm putting in some uh, one gallon hosta and a vine that I'll talk about in just a minute. But when this wall was cut in, uh, it really cut down to our, you hear me talk about my clay soils all the time and you know, basically just pulling bricks. Uh, um, all you'd have to do is cook that uh, to, to make a brick. The other thing is they put a gravel base uh, at the bottom of this wall and then they put a fabric uh, a fabric behind it to keep the water from from coming through and direct the water um, underneath it um, and it really made this I mean, so it's super compacted deep soil plus on top of that it's got gravel in it so I'm using my pick mattock uh, to uh, dig the holes here the pick end of the mattock is the side you want to use this the mattock end is really for cutting for cutting roots and cutting things that you find in the ground but the pick part if you'll swing this thing and you don't have to come over you know like this it's not like this it's not like some kind of um you know you don't have to put that much effort into it the weight of this thing will drop it in griffy you don't want any of this um you know we'll we'll drop it in the ground a little bit so just a little bit of effort behind it can put it in and then you pull back up on it like that and that's how you loosen that that deep soil um, or that really compacted soil. So that's the effort right there. So that's, uh, I don't have to break out the pickmatic very much cause I'm, you know, a bit, um, you know, um, a big guy. And, uh, but sometimes I do and uh, that's how I go about it. Just use the pick in, punch it in the ground, pull up on it. Um, just use the, uh, let the tool do the work um, as much as possible. And then you can use the shovel to clear out the holes. So I definitely look like I've been working this morning. Uh, we'll go around real quick and take a look at the pieces that have been added uh, to this. The first thing you'll notice here is some soft caress mahonia. There's three here and there's three in yesterday's uh, right at the top of the step. So we've got three at the bottom, three at the top. These will just become a mass in here. They have a, a narrow, soft texture, soft caress. Uh, they're soft caress because they also don't have, you know, they're not prickly like other mahonias. But this narrow leaf against this broad leaf on the shindo viburnum, they look great together. The shindo viburnum will eventually just get huge, and this will probably just be a tuft of mahonia. You can see that in the future. That's the way that's going to look um, as these get bigger. I used a different um, hookera uh, down here. Well, this is a hookera. Those were hookerellas. This is obsidian, which is a very dark foliage. Um, hookera, again, I'm taking advantage of being able to actually use hookra uh, in my area on a dry slope like this. Uh, another one of those moonlight lace viburnum was added. There's another one right at the top of the steps. Again, just kind of making it look like it's uh, all done with intent. This thing will get up in this area. It probably will get taller in time, but it can be kept, you know, perfect little evergreen here. Um, it'll bloom in the uh, late winter. Um, uh, 
white flowers about you know about this about this big around beautiful foliage on this plant it's half uh, viburnum tinus and half viburnum davidi and it got the beautiful foliage from davidi and got the flowers from uh, tinus uh, super interesting plant there's a, a japanese akuba like gold dust that was already here uh, in fact there's three or four more that we'll see as we go across um, there's a poet's laurel uh, three poet's laurel that were already here you can see um, the fruit on them in the uh, fall uh, this time of year they're a little off colored i'm guessing you know nobody's doing any maintenance down here so they haven't been watered i think they're just kind of under uh, they're a little thirsty uh, down here once all of this is done you know it can become something that's maintained uh, uh, it needs probably it needs drip irrigation across the top of this bank uh, the Everillo Carex was carried over as well. Those are uh, going up the steps over there. And there's five of them here. Again, fit, fitting all the pieces together. There's three more of those obsidian uh, hookeras. Uh, again, carrying things down as we go. Um, and then in this spot, uh, there is a Burning Love Lakothawi, and I love this plant. Uh, all the new growth on this plant uh, has this burgundy, uh, burgundy foliage and um, so the more it's growing, the, the more color is on it. Obviously, I'm planting this in November, so uh, it doesn't have quite as much color as it will other times of the year. This plant will get low and wide, and, um, you know, humans love squares and rectangles and circles and things like that. I'm not a giant fan um, of, of, you know, a perfect circle like this patio is, and so a couple of these things creeping out onto the edge of that, um, I think will just kind of soften, you know, that unnatural... Uh, circle. This spot uh, is going to be left uh, for annuals, perennial color, um, and uh, <laughs> seasonal change. And so that, that's the per kind of the purpose of this. If this was going to be landscaped further down, it would need some sort of set of steps to go down there. But again, this is kind of the extent of the planting. This area is going to be left open for the dog. And then uh, we'll do some sc selective screening plants uh, out on the edge of the property. Uh, Griffey, come here, bud. Come here, bud. Come here, bud. Good boy. Good boy. All right. A couple more things to point out on this side. Uh, there's an agastache uh, planted here, but there's clearly not enough sun for it. Um, so it may look like a weed right now. It's going dormant, but it's going to be moved out there to the sunnier part in the front garden space. There's another one of these akubas here, but um, i got another one of these ligustrum that have creeped up in the middle of it. So I'm going to use the most exaggerated uh, pruners ever to prune that out of there. Uh, it would slowly but surely do exactly what that one that I cut out earlier in the video has done. Uh, this is a Miss Scarlet Elysium. Uh, this is a red flowering Elysium. It's actually budded up. It's actually budded up now. If it stays warm long enough this fall, we'll get some flowers on it. Uh, it's a, um, uh, it was a sport actually of a, or, or a, a found seedling of a uh, Florida Elysium. Uh, beautiful plant perfect little round ball like this and it'll bloom again with red flowers at a time of year nothing else is flowering it's also a, a, a native as well and we'll jump over here to the other side of the patio the burning love lakothawi that was on the other side of where the annual bed is going to go there's another one of those here three more soft crest mahonia i do love soft crest mahonia these are going to become a big one single looking plant and they're going to come out here on this and soften the edge of this patio just a bit uh, and all of that is with intent, that they're kind of planted, they're kind of crowded and they'll get, uh, you know, they'll fill that whole space in. And they're going to end up, somebody commented on the second video about them being taller than it is on the tag. I want to point, let me point that out and something I've said many, many times. The tags are really maintainable at. And so if you see something on a tag that says two to three feet, it's really saying it's easily maintainable around two to three feet. Um, plants don't have off switches and so there's no plant that reaches exactly the height that it says and it's and it's done so keep that in mind but uh, easily maintainable around two to three feet uh the there are two more elysium uh, on this side two of the uh, florida sunshine elysium uh just a, has a gold a gold pop of color over here that you can you can see from a mile see from a mile away and then three more of these munchkin uh oak leaf hydrangeas that were in the second video have been added to this space. This is a dwarf oak leaf hydrangea, easily kept, you know, tag probably says again, two to three feet, but they're gonna get three or four feet if you let them, uh, maybe even five or six feet in the future if you never prune them, but they can be pruned after they uh, 
after they flower. There's a green Akuba on this side. Uh, then there were variegated Akuba were on the other side. I didn't plant this. This one was already here. There's another one there. Again, this is that Florida um, sunshine Elysium. And this is where this Ligustrum was. This has to be cut down to the ground. I think it'd be near impossible to cut this completely out. So I'm going to just get it cut flush to the ground and then just keep cutting it off until it fades on its own because otherwise, I mean, I think at the base of this tree, this one will be difficult to, uh, to get out of here. It's well anchored. And there's Vinca Major growing out of it, creeping across the ground. Uh, this, was, this was a fight to the death of invasive plants <laughs> right here below this tree. Okay, there are three uh, Schizophragma uh, hydrangeoides uh, planted uh, kind of equally spaced on the wall. This is a common name, is a hy uh, Japanese hydrangea vine. Uh, they're not hydrangeas, but they have hydrangea-like uh, flower clusters uh, in the uh, late spring and early summer. These vines have hold fast on them, meaning they'll attach to a wall like this and, and cover it pretty quickly, and that is the intent. Uh, they're, the flower clusters are lightly fragrant. I think it's kind of overcooked a bit on how fragrant they are. Get yellow fall color, lose their leaves in the winter, so you'll see the structure of the vine on the wall uh, in the winter time. Once they get going, uh, they'll take this wall. Uh, they'll take this wall pretty quickly. They do need some help initially, so it'll leave those bamboo uh, poles on. But once the, once it gets going, uh, it'll take off. There are hosta planted in between them, and there's blue angel uh, intermixed with one of my all-time favorites, which is stained glass. Beautiful hosta. They're going dormant, so they don't look like much now. Uh, they'll go dormant, come back up in the spring, bigger, better, fuller. This grass is actually going to be cut back from this wall a bit and a few additional things added uh, in the spring. And you'll see that, uh, likely see a video for that uh, when that happens. But I think getting some of this wall covered up with the vines uh, and then these hosta, which are ones that get, they're not giants by any stretch of the imagination, but they get some good size. They get some good size on them. Um, we'll cover up some of this, you know, what is a... <laughs> It's, it's a big thing in the middle of this landscape uh, that, needs, uh, that needs, to be, uh, needs to be covered a bit. There's part three of the landscape uh, rehab video. Again, the purpose of this particular piece of this job is number one, soften that wall, which I just talked about, and number two, create a little bit of a room uh, for this patio space. And meaning, I, I, you know, the things that are planted back here are going to get up to a height where if you're sitting in a chair, especially one of these lower Adirondack chairs, you'll feel slightly enclosed in this space, but not things that are so tall like that Ligustrum was that I cut out over there that you can't actually appreciate how big of a lot this is here um, in a big, you know, big nice space. Uh, so um, stay tuned for part uh, four and five uh, as soon as I can get back over here and do it. The, the screening plant video, um, will be part four and then that little hidden garden in the front will be part five and then I think on the on you know the part six I talked about using some mostly native screening plants back here is um, we'll talk about in that video about not putting yourself in a prison there's only a few angles back here that I actually want to create a bit of a screen you know if you don't if, if, if most of the space, you know, you can't see your neighbor anyway, there's really no reason to kind of cut it off. Uh, but we'll talk about that when we get to that video. Thank you guys for following along with this series. Um, uh, I'm really enjoying uh, how this is coming together. These two pieces together have really changed this over the last couple of days. Thanks for watching.